watching American Movie Classics. American Movie Classics presents Newsreel Theater, featuring rare newsreel footage of historic people and events. These headlines mark the end of an era. After 66 years, Connie Mack departs the American baseball scene. Thus, the oldest link with the past is severed, and Connie Mack becomes a legendary figure. Mr. Mack ran the club's affairs from his office at the ballpark. Here, surrounded by such mementos as the white elephant, symbol of the athletics for 50 years, all decisions concerning the ball club were made. The player's list of his last team was surrounded by pictures of his great teams of the past. Teams which won nine pennants in successful managerial career. These pictures taken during the 1929 season show pitchers Quinn, Wahlberg, Rommel, and Earnshaw, who with Lefty Grove made up the athletic pitching staff. Connie Mack, seated next to one of his greatest stars, Jimmy Fox, directed his team from the bench to another American League pennant. The opening game of the 1929 World Series was played at Wrigley Field in Chicago before a capacity crowd. Mr. Mack posed with Chicago manager Joe McCarthy and then watched one of the greatest thrills of his long career. His surprise pitcher, 35-year-old Howard Emke, established a new World Series strikeout record of 13 and the Athletics went on to win the series four games to one. The following year, Mr. Mack's Athletics won the American League pennant by eight games and met the St. Louis Cardinals in the series. Backed by the mighty bats of Simmons, Fox and Cochran, Mr. Mack faced the Cardinal manager, Gabby Street, with the utmost confidence. With Scheib Park jammed to capacity, the A's ace pitcher, Lefty Grove, turned back the Cardinals in the first game. And from there, the Athletics went on to win the series four games to two, and for Mr. Mack, his second world championship in a row. In the 1931 series, President Hoover attended one of the games as Connie Mack's athletics took part in their third straight World Series. The A's battled the Cardinals through seven games, but a new star, Pepper Martin, who ran the bases like a wild man, proved too much for the athletics, and the Cardinals won it four games to three. Thirty nine was baseball's centennial year, marked by appropriate ceremonies at Cooperstown, New York. Here, Connie Mack was paid high honor as a member of baseball's Hall of Fame, where his name is forever enshrined as one of the game's immortals. This was truly a high spot in Mr. Mack's long career, surrounded by such great figures as Cy Young, Walter Johnson, George Sisler. Napoleon Lajoie, Judge Landis, Babe Ruth, Tris Speaker, Eddie Collins, Ty Cobb, and Hans Wagner. In 1947, the city of Meriden, Connecticut, paid tribute to Mr. Mack. It was here that he first played professional baseball back in 1884. And in 1949, the city of New York set aside a day to honor Connie Mack. There was a parade up Broadway before cheering thousands with ticker tape. And Mr. Mack rode in the back of an open car like a conquering hero as New York gave him a rousing, heartfelt welcome. Schoolboy ball players marched in his honor. At City Hall Plaza, a huge crowd gathered to watch as the mayor greeted him before such distinguished guests as Joe DiMaggio and Grover Whalen. <laughs> Yankee Stadium was crowded to do him honor. 
and thousands cheered as Connie Mack walked from the dugout. The president of the American League, Will Harridge, presented him with a plaque in the name of baseball. And so in March of 1950, Connie Mack directed his last spring training camp. Here he is with Greasy Neal, coach of the Philadelphia pro football team. He was optimistic in talking to sports writers about the prospects for the coming year. He posed for still pictures with Bob Dillinger. Here he is with coach Mickey Cochran. And Mr. Mack cheerfully accommodated the autograph seekers. Back in Philadelphia for the pennant race. Since 1909, Mr. Mack's teams played at Shy Park, sometimes known as Connie Mack Stadium. Manager Mack watched practice with Eddie Joost and Sam Chapman, his keen blue eyes taking in everything in all parts of the field. He conferred with coach Jimmy Dykes, who succeeds him now as the only other manager the athletics ever had. These scenes of Connie Mack on the bench are the last pictures of a sight familiar to countless fans for half a century. Somehow it won't seem the same without that tall, thin figure in street clothes in the athletics dugout, following every move on the ball field and planning the strategy that will bring victory. No longer will a wave from Mr. Mack change the defensive positions of Philadelphia outfielders. An essential part of the Major League Baseball scene for 50 years, Connie Mack will be missed by player and fan alike. So after 66 active years in the sport he loved so well, he remains a majestic figure, the grand old man of baseball, Connie Mack.